Okay, we're recording. Okay, well, good morning, all of you that are here. Um, so this is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call for September 2nd. Um, do we have any announcements? Uh, I actually have an announcement about the Sakai Virtual Conference. The call for proposals is open. Um, I haven't announced it yet. There'll be a message going out to the list later today, but I put the um, link to the form into the Etherpad, and um, we're hoping to get submissions in by the 23rd. So I know that's only about three weeks, so we figured, you know, um, deadlines sometimes motivate people. <laughs> so um, what we are planning for is a good chunk of the program is going to be lightning talks. So we're really trying to encourage Encourage people to submit lightning talks and those are kind of you know low pressure five minute you know quick um, topics so if you have something that you would like to um, submit please do so and again the link to that is in the etherpad those are all the announcements I have right now Anybody else? LAMP is having another webinar next Thursday at 2 o'clock uh, dealing with the basic skills needed to have your um, online content, not documents and that kind of thing, but just making your Sakai pages accessible. Cool. And it's open. I Martin will probably put the link out, but it's open to anybody. It's a good time if you've got faculty maybe who don't get the basics. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, we'll welcome David Bauer from University of Dayton. He's going to be showing us some of the contributions that they've been making for the lessons tool. Take it away. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I don't ha I don't have anything formal to present, but I thought I could just using uh, everything just got merged yesterday, so everything's kind of hot off the presses. But I thought I would just um, demo some stuff on the nightly server to just um, give you give everybody an idea of what kind of things were put in there, and then um, it's kind of nice we have a really small group because anyone can just jump in and ask questions, or we can click on different buttons or whatever, however we want to do this. Um, the main, let's see, the main uh, JIRA ticket is, and I'll put it in the chat, it's uh, 44151. And uh, the other ones are actually linked from there. And I do apologize, the tickets don't have all of the kind of information they need yet. Um, so that's something I'm just continuing to go through and document all the different changes that were in there. Um, but that is kind of the main one if you want to link out to the other features. So I will start sharing my screen and I can um, just walk through. If I can uh, figure this one out. I'm not super familiar with the big blue button. OK. Can you see my screen yet? Yes, I'm seeing it. Yes, we can. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if I if, is it. I have two browser windows open. Is it the one in the student view, or is it the one with the uh, it looks um, like a editor and everything? Instructor yeah. view. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's the right one then. Um. So the the main the main Jira ticket that. Uh, that I created is really just a bunch of kind of smaller fixes, things that we had been um, just changing locally that thought we'd package up in a big group. So some of those were um, when you expand and collapse a section in lessons, there's a CSS class now that gets toggled and you can use that for like custom styling or, well, I mean, a lot of different things, but that was something that 
um, it makes that a little bit easier when you know whether or not a section is actually expanded or collapsed. Um, there's some all small styling and, and typos here and there that they were they were fixed, um, as well as the I guess the biggest thing from the the 44151 ticket is when you had linked a checklist item to something that was required on the page and then duplicated or imported that to a different site, um, it, the link would be broken because it doesn't link to the, the item in the new site, but it wouldn't tell the user that it was broken, so that could be kind of confusing. Um, so now there's um, it'll actually just have a little broken link icon and, uh, and a message that says, you know, edit this checklist to relink all the items. And that just kind of indicates to the instructor they have to go in there and relink everything. Um, trying to think if there's anything else in this one specifically. Um, some of the other uh, duplication pieces, so releasing subpages to groups, um, just trying to keep that. If, if you actually do duplicate your groups, um, I think that's an option, then it'll actually keep the subpages released to those groups in the new site as well. Um, let's see, but, but the, this first ticket is really just kind of a collection of small things that uh, we're just either fixes or, or just some cleanup pieces, so it's a little bit less of a a big demo. The next one um, that I'll talk about is so actually I think I think the first thing I'll talk about is 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 kind of this. Uh, we we went through and changed a lot of the um, add and edit content um, dialogues that pop up um, to just hopefully rearrange them and make them a little bit more um, organized for the different settings. So uh, this, the first one here was, if you can see that add content that's popped up, and this we split into a multi-column layout instead of having just one big list. Um, and we divided things up into, there's kind of simple items. So this would be your add text, add content links, etc. I'm not seeing that change. Yeah, You're your screen that? hasn't okay. moved since it first loaded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's right. I think I think I'm on the wrong window. I have two windows named the same thing. So let me uh, let me see. Um, nice. How about now? Yeah. Oh, that's yes. yeah, okay. That's nice. Please, continue continue to yell at me if I, if if you're not seeing something. Um. So this, yeah, so we split it up into three columns and then try to divide them into things that were similar to each other. So the first column being the simple items, you know, add text, add a sub page, stuff like that. We included learning app. Maybe that's up for discussion, but we thought that that kind of fit with that first column more than the others. The second one, we wanted to do more of linked and embedded items. So that would be linking to assignments, tests and quizzes, embedding announcements, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the third one, we kind of just called advanced because it's stuff like checklists or questions, things that are, you know, comments tool, things that need a little bit more setup or explanation to use. Um, well, one reason I then, like this is it's not one long list that you have to scroll down to get to add checklist. This is, yeah, this is a nice um, layout. Oh, thank you. Um, and then there's also another box, and I, you can see it. Or actually, I'll just close this. So one of the other things we did was when previously when you would go to add an item, it would actually scroll you back to the top and use it as a drop down hmm. for the add content. But now when you click it anywhere on the page, it'll just leave you where you are and, and use that kind of pop up in the middle of the page. Um, so you'll also see the layout elements, and that's where the section break and column break have uh, has gone. Okay, um, I, we we didn't see so, that. We didn't see that where the section break and column break. That's, that's so weird. Okay, I don't know why my screen stops <laughs> sharing. Let me try to switch. Um, I can I can just share maybe the whole screen and maybe that would do it instead of just the browser. I do apologize. Okay, you see my whole screen at this point? Yes. It's, yep. it's scrolling. Okay. You see some scrolling and things. Okay. So I just clicked on the add item from the middle of the page, and do you see that pop up now? No, nope. it's still, we still see arrows circling around, around. Well, yeah, no, I'm, 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 seeing see your, arrows. I'm seeing your screen. 
your yeah. full screen now, but I'm not seeing anything happening. It's static. So it's very odd. All right, I'll give it one more go. Let's see if I can. Okay, maybe. I have everything in one uh, browser window now, so maybe that'll uh, yeah, now we're make it easier. Yeah, now we're seeing the blue button screen. Okay, and are you seeing the other tab? Man. I see the other tab, yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we'll work it. Yeah, I just, sorry, I just turned it off. I'll jump to it real quick. Okay. Now it's working. Ah, okay. So, all right. Okay, I so saw your cursor yell, yell again if I... Uh, all right, so if you can see my cursor and everything, I put it all in one browser window, so maybe that dual mm -hmm. monitors mm -hmm. wasn't really uh, working too well with the sharing. Um, but yeah, so now the layout elements is in its own its own section as well, so that's a fourth, uh, kind of that fourth box if, if you were to add something in the middle of the page. Um, and then, and then that extends to um, to really all of. We, we try to clean up some of the other edit item or edit dialogues as well. So now you'll see um, when you edit an item, if you're seeing the pop up now that says uh, display settings near the top. Mm -mm. No. Um, well, one other suggestion I was wondering. Instead of advanced content items, maybe that could be broken out into two sections, like interactive items where you have sort of the checklist, um, question comments, and um, an external learning app or plugin, whatever that other thing was called that was currently grouped in the simple content. And then have, um, I can't remember what the last couple of things were under that section right now, but. Um, I feel like it might be helpful to group those things as sort of interactive content items. Interactive content items instead of the Yeah, instead advanced. of just advanced. Of, yeah. yeah. Like make a I don't I don't remember what the other items were in that group. I'd have to look back at it. But um sort of like the comments and, and um questions and checklists are kind of interactive things and so are some of the um the external learning app stuff are sort of embedded content items. Well, I guess external learning app would go up more under links because that's a link. It usually links out to a separate tab or window or, or mm -hmm. another page. Um, so maybe that that external learning would be would be a a link or embed. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's an interesting thought, and, and I mean, then luckily, like I mean, however, I don't, I don't know how, however, we decide to label those. Those are you know kind of small changes that can be can be addressed before twenty one is actually released. Um, but it's a, it, it's a good thought because we we kind of went with like you know the 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 farthest left column should be things that are um, that most users would want to use. They're quick, um, quick and easy to understand, and then. Yeah, you know, the middle one kind of reserving the linking to things inside of Sakai. And then the last one was it was it was kind of a catch all of things that were just a little bit more um you know, cumbersome to use or whatever it was. So but but maybe, you know, relabeling that and, and dividing it into a group that that explains what those things are a little bit more would make sense. I also yeah, think I mean, adding, the term to... into, adding the term interactive can actually, you know, because people are thinking of ways that they can make things more interactive. And so if you say these are the interactive tools, it could be motivating to actually use them. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a, I mean, it's a great point. <clears throat> um, so the, the next. I was just going to say real quick, oh, those, yeah. are, those are great. You know those ideas they can all just be 
you know, just new jurors created for those ideas, you know, because it's, you know, but it, it looks a lot better, Dave, than what, yes. what was there previously. Big improvement. Yeah, definitely. I, I wonder if Thank there you. couldn't be some um, some kind of uh, a link added to those headers so that um, if you're a keyboard user, you could like go tab straight into the header instead of having to tab through like all of those content items. I don't know. Yeah, like that's when it. When you mean, pull up that, when you pull up that yeah. menu, like maybe have kind of a like anchor link at the top of it, like jump to you know basic content or yeah, I don't know, whatever, something like that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that is something you know. So some of this, I, I will you know readily admit that some of this these changes are, are old. I mean, these are things that we we might have created years and years ago that that might need some accessibility improvements or keyboard use improvements. And that's something that I'm I'm definitely happy to jump on between now and when 21 is released. So but that's, that's a great suggestion as well as being able to kind of tap through the different sections before getting into the list. Yeah, have you looked at how to make those collapsible sections accessible to keyboard users? Um, we haven't looked into that too much. I know that they're, um, you know, toggling the, let's see. Um, I think we had talked about that. Sorry, you see. The yeah. opening, the closed sections, they, they're currently not openable with keyboard, the right. collapsed sections on the pages. Which you have to use the open invisible. all. Yeah. Yeah. So if if you're a keyboard user, you have to use the um, the expand all at the top of the page to expand all of the sections. You can't expand them one by one. And of course, you have to know to do that. Yeah. So so that we we have. I mean, the the sections are kind of similar. Are you seeing the edit item dialog at this point? No. No. We're seeing still still up. A few layers of your uh, big blue button screen there in your desktop. Oh really? So it doesn't let me like tab over. Maybe I'm using big button wrong. If I hit okay, so if I hit share screen, do I need to? And I just selected this, you know, browser or screen two or something. It should just share whatever's active on the screen, right? I don't have to have. It should. I don't know why it's not doing that. Yeah, big blue button screen share is always a little finicky. Very strange. Now um, I'm just seeing the arrows. Yeah. I know this I is try to rejoin, maybe, you. but would it, would it be possible for <laughs> Wilma to share her screen and and you just direct her what to do? Since it's been merged to nightly, could she just go in and play? Yeah, I can go to nightly. Is it on um, just regular trunk, or, or is it on experimental, or just all? Um... He had to. He had to go out and in. It's on trunk. Oh. Okay. Let me. The, uh, both of them since, he's, since he's reconnecting, do we want to let him take one more shot at it, or should I just? Yeah, let him. Let him all right, I'm. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I can try I can try again and see if it you know just reconnecting works and then if not I'm happy to you know walk somebody through clicking or something if, if maybe someone else's um, screen sharing can work but I don't think so I don't have the ability to present at this point oh you probably lost it when you got out oh here let me um, make presenter there you go oh All you right. got it I'll give it a uh, Give it one more go. So we're talking about seeing these changes in version 21? Yes. OK. I just wanted to be sure I understood that. OK. So are you able to see kind Still of my whole screen now arrows. and yell at me if it? Still uploading for me. Yep. 
So perhaps a connection problem. <laughs> Um, but if someone wants to, so I don't know if someone else wants to try to, um, yeah, to maybe log I'll in and I can, I, and I can, okay. I'll give it a shot. So I have a, there is, uh, if you log in as the user David on the nightly, the trunk MySQL. Okay. Um, and then the password should be David as well. You can, you can jump on the site that I was. I was in, but I, I guess so, so. The next piece will be that I'll uh, that I'll kind of talk through is so we went through and we did the edit dialogues and those. One of the bigger things we did was split up, uh, or put into collapsible sections um, similar settings. So stuff that was related to styling and layout of an item, we put into a collapse section, and um, availability would be in a section. So stuff that that kind of appeared across all these different edit dialogues. All right, uh, are you seeing my screen? I am. Okay. So, so if you, that. yeah, hey, um, okay. So, so I don't know what's. Uh, I apologize, um, but uh, Wilma, if you want to click on, so the next kind of big feature we added was uh, being able to add a layout, and so this isn't a new thing, but it's just kind of simplifying adding sections and columns to a page. So if you click on the Add Layout button at the top of the screen, that's right after More Tools. Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah. So, so this is a it's kind of a simplified form that lets you kind of add what you want to add for a section and a column or whatever or multiple columns. Um so if you just type in kind of test in the section title, you'll see it update below and then for the color scheme if you want to just select like navy dark or something or blue dark. Oh, nice. More chase choices. Oh, cool. Um and wow. then can this be accessed with a keyboard um to so, tap around and select. Ideally, yeah. I mean, so this would be something we'd have to do some testing, and we can we can absolutely fix it. It's just a form, so and that's you know forms are usually pretty easy to get um, to get set up properly with keyboards. Can you um, modify the colors with the CSS or something like that? Yeah. So these actually just add new. Um, so previously there were those old colors, and and we left we left those around if you were using them, um, but we just renamed them to like blue legacy or legacy yellow or something like that. So those still exist for the people that have selected them, but then we added the new options. Um, there's just different colors, and you can still do the same thing that you've always done, which is override them. Um, uh, Wilma, if you want to select the like make section collapsible on the right, um, and then select the two columns double width below. It's the third layout in the list. Um, and then, so you would just kind of choose your options and then click on Add Layout. And then you'll see at the bottom of the page, because it'll always add it to the bottom, um, the section and columns are already there. And then, um, because it, it, we, we didn't want to build like a whole new structure, it's really just a kind of a UX, UI piece into it. But if you click on Reorder, um, this was another thing we, we tried to address. Um, and this is drag and drop. So um, again, there, there's we're going to have to work through some of the keyboard and accessibility pieces of it. But um, so now you'll see sections and column breaks um, differently than previously. And so you can actually drag the items into those sections and columns. So if you drag the first text item into above column break, for example, um, and then maybe you know those reference links or whatever, put them. I don't, it doesn't matter really, but if you just drag all those items in to their different places and then hit save, you'll see that they kind of like fill out in the section. So you could either, when you start a new page, you could either go in and click add layout first and set up your, um, set out the, set up the layout for the page, or you could actually just add all your items and then use reorder to put stuff where it goes. Now, is that section header still an H3? I believe it. the section header should just be an H3. It's the same. Okay. So you still need a page header. Yes. Um, so, and then if you hit uh, if you hit the little cog um, in the first column to edit it, you'll see there's also those se settings are still there. So being able to collapse it and everything like that. But then there's also uh, the column and heading legacy. settings. Okay. And that's where you can actually see that we left we left the old colors alone for the people that really wanted them. Um, and the, we just don't add them to the ad layout because they're kind of deprecated. You know, it's like don't use these. They're not. They're pretty. You know. They're not great, but hey, you dude. can. 
Yes. Yeah, they're a little dated, but you can still use them if you if you know if you had them or something. But if you changed, so now if you were to say um, change this one to blue instead of blue dark, it'll actually um, it'll actually just affect the column that you're editing, and that's just because that's how the styling the color selection has always worked. So we didn't we didn't make that a change. We just um, just exposed it a little bit differently. Nice. Um, the the other thing that's new is if you edit the other references subpage button. I appreciate you uh, <laughs> clicking on everything for me. So and in, oh, in yeah. the first column, right. yeah, if you want to edit that. Um, so now in layout and style section, which is the second one down, there's we added uh, colors for the buttons as well, and that has those actually have the same um, the same color schemes or themes or whatever you want to call them. And so you could either select blue dark because that was what we were using before or blue. Um, and that will change the button color to match that theme. And you can hit, you know, update and that'll that'll change it. Nice. Um, nice. The, the other thing you could do, uh, so actually I you can just change it to red. Is. I'm just so, curious. I was going to say like, it, it's kind of funny that I, I Forgot to take Rudy out, but it's actually a red and blue theme <laughs> using UD colors. <laughs> so, oh, okay. you know, um, oh, my we can remove it if we need to, but it, it's, I mean, they're pretty generic, red and blue, but, um, but if you right. change it to red, for example, okay. um, we also added an option where if you edit the, if you edit the settings for the column, if you go back there, you can now force the subpage buttons to match. So that's the checkbox right under the selection. <laughs> and so wow. if you have that set, then it'll just it'll just kind of ignore all of your individual settings and just make sure that whole sub patch looks good. So nice so we tried to kind of add some it's really just a small UX changes, UI changes that are just using everything that was already in place behind the scenes. So there's nothing too too major there. Um, it feels major though, David. We really appreciate it. It really does. Yeah, yeah, these are really nice. Really good. You know, to feel like you've got that kind of uh, aesthetic control on your page is really nice. Yeah. So one of and one of the um, one of our main goals, and this was you know when we started all this this kind of work locally, was we wanted instructors to be able to make better looking pages without having to know any CSS or anything. So we were really right. just trying to get them to use the tools that were already there, but were maybe hard to find. So one of the things that um... I'd like to have possible would be to install sort of um, default, like more than one default CSS. So if you click on that cog there, yeah, um, on the page, the page cog. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, where you can select your custom CSS, like have a couple of different defaults there, like. Um, you know, I, I was thinking, for example, for UVA, the rotunda theme or like, you know, the red and white theme, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever themes like have the um, at a system level be able to upload two or three different custom CSS files that the instructor could just select there um, as kind of a theme. You, you might want a different theme for your sub pages than you have for your facing pages. Right. So just have like you know, instead of having to upload it yourself, just have those like available in that drop down right there. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, this is exciting. I'm really excited really about cool. what you're sh what you're showing. That's great. Um, so the next thing would be, uh, I, I think that's most of it for the the layout. I mean, there's there's some kind of small things in there, but that, that's kind of the main idea behind the add layout features and it and it adds sections so you can use it over and over again on the same page if you wanted to have three sections it's um it's you know it's really just adding sections and column breaks um with some settings kind of defaulted um so the one of the next and then we talked a little bit about reorder um that's one that's probably the oldest <laughs> change that we have so this was one that um it probably needs. Um, it probably does need a little bit more, and it, it's going to go through. Obviously, it's you know rigmarole of testing and everything. But um, this would be one that that we would definitely want to jump in and 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 try to make a little bit more accessible. It's. I don't think it's. It's my guess is that it's the same as the current reorder is, but the reorder as it 
existed before was uh, lacking as well. So um, I'm curious, does it carry over to when you add from another page? Oh, okay. It does okay. not. No, we left that. Yeah. Yeah, we left that one alone. Um, and then I think the the kind of the only difference, uh, the only other difference with reorder was uh, for sections, you can either delete the entire section or you can um, kind of collapse the section into the previous one. So um, it's it's an I think it's a new option to be able to kind of delete the section and everything that would quote unquote belong to that section. Um, whereas previously you would delete the section item, but you'd still have to go through and delete all the items in that section if you wanted to do that. Um, well, now I, I really like the way that this looks because the reorder as it stands is not user friendly at all. You can't, you know, you've got column break all things below, and it, it just it's just really confusing. Everything looks the read. same. Everything, you yeah. know, you've got, and you only get part of the description. So this is so much easier to read. It's organized. It's indented. Much much yeah, better. That looks great. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, thank you. And, yeah. and we do that. That I'm sorry. I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt. No, I, I was just wondering about the keyboard accessibility of that because that's also a problem with the reorder um, and right the drag now. And drop. Yeah. yeah. Like the drag and drop. Can you tab to one of those and then like move, use the arrow. right arrow to move it to the trash or something? So, so my I believe it's just because it's mostly just kind of a UI change. It's just going to be the same as what it was before. But I do think that okay. that's something that we want to that we would want to upgrade fix um you mm -hmm. know the yeah I, re I really like how you've done the column break and section breaks here because that's a huge problem with the current um mm -hmm. uh, yeah. way it works it's really hard to tell what's going on with those yeah and if you click on the kind of first text item that lorem ipsum uh link we did add a preview, I believe. Yeah, so you can actually nice. see the contents of oh, what that item is. Oh, very nice. Cool. Nice, nice. Um, so that, and that preview is very different depending on the item type, and that's just because of the way Lessons does things. So some of them will actually take you to the item, and some of them <laughs> will actually, like, pull up the, th and, it's, and it's just a, um, yeah, there's some, some weirdness with that, but. Um, is it just the text that takes you to the I preview? Think, I think text is the preview. There might be another one or two, and then by default, everything else is kind of like, let's actually go straight to that item. Um, Did this open any tab? OK. The, uh, so if you want to hit, I mean, you can. Sorry, uh, I was just. No, 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 you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> But if you want to hit cancel and go back to the, the main page, one of the other things that we wanted to address was um, date releasing sub pages. Mm. Um, and so if you edit that other resources page, um, in the visibility and access, so we have the, the date release page on this um, date release page on the following date. Uh, so that feature is the same mm. that it was before. Um, except that if you date release a page, it will now show to the student and say you can't, the student can't access the page, but they see that it exists and they see when it will be made available to them. And so, um, and that was just through our research, students really did not like when stuff just magically appeared. Um, so you'd have to hit check the box as well. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's good usability stuff because. Yeah. They don't know to check back if they yeah. don't know that it's going to be coming soon. And it's just a lot of communication um, that the instructor would have to do. There's, so the, I, there was I another would, JIRA on that too. So I think we can close that one now then. <laughs> I um, I think there's there's a problem here. If you go back to that edit there, um, if you enter a date and you don't check the box, it just doesn't stick and instructors yeah. will be confused by that. I think that date field should be completely hidden until you check the date release page box, then it appears and you can select the date. Yeah, no, I mean that's a that's a great that's a great yeah, improvement. That's and that's and this, that's a small thing. This is a this is a yeah, problem I still right do now. Exactly what I did is put yeah. the problem. date in and keep Yeah, going. it's a very common problem. So I think all yeah. of those date release things, um, the date uh, field should be hidden until you check the box. And so, um, no, yeah, that, and that's a small improvement. I'm happy to, I'm happy to, to do that. We can disable it or hide it until you check it or however we want to address that. That's totally fine. Uh, but to, to get around. Do you want to create a JIRA for that or? 
Yeah, that's that's usually easiest. Just something you yeah. know, create a Jira for that, and then I can yeah, just because it's a small a small thing. Um, and so then to get around, so then we had you know, of course, then we had faculty that 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 yelled and said, but I don't want the students to see it still. And so um, that second checkbox is now just a manual override, so that you can just explicitly hide a sub page. Um, so regardless of the date settings, an instructor could still go in there and check this box. Maybe the page isn't ready. They want to set up the date, but they don't want to, you know, it's not ready for students to see or anything like that. Or, um, but if you check that box and hit, um, hit update, you'll actually see that it says um, it won't show you the date and it just says hidden. And that's because the date's being ignored. It's just hiding that sub page from the student entirely. So we just had an instructor with this problem who enabled both a date and hidden and didn't understand why it wasn't becoming visible. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I, is there, maybe it would be possible to add another option like hide from students until this date instead, because I, I feel like that, that was a problem for our instructor anyway. Um, yeah, and, and so we tried to make that a little bit more clear with the uh, um you know kind of the wording of just showing that it's truly hidden versus you know date released until or whatever um but but yeah because yeah, we had the same discussion of like do we add an additional date and it's hide until this date or do we you know only show a date that's um you know released on this date or whatever it is so those um we just when it came down to it it was it was simpler from a technical standpoint to just keep it the way it was working, but then to maybe just make it a little bit more clear about what's happening that, um, you know, that hidden checkbox kind of just overrides everything and hides it. Um, and that and, and I, I totally understand what you're saying though. So that's something that we could um, even continue to uh, um, continue to address or change if we need to. The, yeah, the last, oh, yeah. Maybe some separate visibility settings for that, like maybe three options like um you know uh date released with with um you know indication to student or something like that and then and then uh hidden until a certain date and then just hidden period um and not have them be able to be have multiple ones checked just check one and that's it and then and then do the, the selection. yeah um i apologize for the noise <laughs> yeah uh, David, Tiffany mentioned in the chat just a little bit earlier, but I usually find that the red warning text that's default is not does not pass color contrast. And so we need to start thinking about doing dark red or, you know, dark gray, something that passes the color contrast check. Where, where right now it says hidden, yeah. that, that may not be visible to some users. Okay. Yeah, no, that that's um, and that, that's an that's an easy adjustment as well. Right, but uh, just so, an awareness, yeah. just to kind of surface that. Yeah. Um, and and I think ideally with them, you know, lessons is a little bit of an oddball in some ways, but ideally I think that you know setting setting a uh, a warning text at the you know kind of at that base level for the overall like skin styling of Sakai. And then yeah. just using that in lessons would would work, but I, you know, lessons is kind of odd in that sense that it doesn't yeah, that's what evolve I do all the time. In all my, oh, and all my CSS sheets, I change all that red to black. I just don't even use the red. So. Yeah. Uh, and then, so then the other um, the other piece of this is um, if you edit the that other resources subpage again, and then set. Um, uncheck the hide checkbox and then set the date uh, to sometime in the past. And this is where um, I'm assuming that it was it was previously not this way, but we added text for when an item has been released, but is um, but it's past that release date. So it just says that it's released and that text only shows to the instructors. It does not show to the student. And so this is where it's like, I mean, correct me if this was already already a thing but i know we had talked about this locally at one point but um we had instructors that would go back in and they had a bunch of sub pages that were date released previously and they didn't realize that they were date released because it didn't indicate that they were released because they were released in the past so um 
So just some kind of helpful text to the instructor. That color may also not pass. Yeah, I, I think that's too light as well. Maybe, yeah, um, maybe these the could. I was gonna say. I mean, I know, I know, you guys are 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 going on with about the colors, but all that can be easily changed. Right, so, but you have to, you have to go. Oh, that needs to be changed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I feel like, you know, just. I mean, it's 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 enough sure. to say it. It's enough to say it, <laughs> and then we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> The, um, yeah, and, and this is, you know, there's the other kind of side of this whole thing is, is just that like all of this stuff was merged so recently that we haven't even really gone through and done that first pass of like, oh, this was, you know, spaced wrong or this color's bad or whatever else. So, like all of that stuff can kind of just come out in the once over of it. So, um, yeah, and this is on nightly. So anybody can go here and, you know, yeah. just start making jeers. You know, Absolutely. Find something. Um, I think I'm trying to, and I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure when the, uh, like where I am on time. <laughs> so I do apologize, do we're yeah, talking talk in time. Okay. Um, but I think, I mean, I think that those were the main, the main kind of changes we had the, you know, date release subpage stuff was, was, um, updated a little bit. The, the ad layout was a big feature change and then reorder, which kind of goes along closely with that re layout or that ad layout. And then, and then those add and edit dialog boxes. Um, I think those are those are kind of the main big ones. And then there's going to be a lot of small small little changes throughout. This just looks like the next level of, of usability. Uh, this is so nice. Yeah. Thanks. thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Dave yeah. And you, Dayton. You guys did a great job. It's um, definitely going to be a a hit with folks, I think. Yep, looks great. It really modernizes everything. Everything is drag and drop now for a usability standpoint in a lot of different ways for many different like website building for people who aren't really used to doing uh, coding and processing. Um, so this is really innovative and uh, has the ability to do a lot of good things for people. So nice work, Dave. Yeah, thank you. And thank yeah, thank you, all, everybody. and. Please either like shoot you know shoot me a message privately or you know create a create a Jira and I'm happy to go in there and fix you know whatever small things we find or, or updates we want to make to this stuff. So I think yeah it was uh like Adrian said we have till GA to fix stuff so and I'm happy to get in there and and, and tweak things. All right, so should I stop the screen share then, or was there anything else you wanted to show us? No, I mean I think that's I think that's everything, unless anybody had anything in particular. Looks great. Thanks. Thank you, University of Dayton. Awesome. So yep, we have some a few nice minutes. contribution. I, I did. I don't know if we have time for really a lot of Jira's, but I did have one that came up with the core team yesterday that I was hoping to just kind of get some opinions on. Um, it should be really quick, if that's okay, Charles. Sure, go ahead. It's um, it's the first one in the list there. It's uh, four four one three two, and I'll paste it in the chat. Um, there was a, um, a request to add a property to disable the forum's group. Well, Matt, it looks like you might have done a, a cut and paste rather than a copy paste because it disappeared from the etherpad. Oh, uh, that was me. Oh. oh, well, anyway, just. I was okay. just moving it. Uh, oh, he was moving it up. Gotcha. Right. Okay, I'm confused. Oh, you moved it above where it has Jira Palooza. Okay. Um, anyway, it was a, a property to disable group permission locking in forums. And um, we talked about it a little bit on the core team. Uh, apparently, relatively recently, I think it might have happened in 19, there was a, um, a feature added 
that uh, locks the group permissions on forums after you set up like you know you can you can do the um, automatically create forums topics for groups thing when you're in the the topic creation workflow um, but then and once you do that it locks all those forums and oh, that's um terrible yeah the, a lot of people like to go in and tweak them for all sorts of reasons um after they're created so we didn't really understand why this group locking was implemented to begin with and um and our recommendation was to just get rid of the locking um, rather than adding a property to be able to disable it um, so we wanted to get some feedback from the teaching and learning folks to see if anybody could think of a reason why you would want to lock the permissions for absolutely for not I, no. I think that's that's stupid <laughs> get rid of it <laughs> kill it kill it kill it, yeah. kill it it seems like the instructor should be able to go in and do what needs to be done right yeah, this doesn't there doesn't seem to be any reason why you would want to lock it um you know, I, I understand wanting to lock groups when they're associated with an assignment, but for forums, it's just permissions. So you can freely move students from one group to another and have them access the appropriate forums. And, you know, in some cases, instructors want to change those group forums to let other students read it, but not post in it. Tiffany? Um, that that's not actually what this is about. It's not locking the groups. No, I know. It's, it's locking, it's locking the, the permissions. permissions. I know. Right. That's why I'm saying I don't think there's a legitimate reason to do that. <laughs> yeah. I can't see any any legitimate use case that would make that, you know, reasonable. The why only thing that I can come up with is wanting to archive that particular forum after you've closed it or something like that. But I, uh, that but, doesn't seem but, like an appropriate way to handle that. No, I yeah, mean, it really just, shouldn't affect just the permissions. Lock the, lock no. the posting in it. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I can't see any any reason why you'd want this to be. Okay. So does everybody on the call then agree that this this was a dumb feature to begin with and it should just be removed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm it. <laughs> it this particular. Okay. Yeah. So we have we have consensus that um that the the, the thing that was added should just be gotten rid of and so we don't need a new property. All right, thank you. That was quick. Yep. Revert. <laughs> Abort. <laughs> well, it it was a it was just it was a small it was one line item in the overall feature. So, it's not we'll revert the whole thing. <laughs> just just that one uh that that one piece of it. Right. Because the, the feature was, you know, being able to, you know, create multiple, you know, all these topics with all the groups. Right. That was the that was the original feature. And that is very valuable. Right. So, yes. Well, yeah, the auto creating topics yeah. for groups is a very valuable feature. Absolutely. And, yep. and, yeah, and but that's great. been around for a while. Though. Yeah, that's that, been around for a long time. New. Yeah, that's that's not a new I, feature, and it's right. a good feature. And our instructors use it heavily. Um, I, we have <clears throat> very large classes that use it for rosters, uh, you know, different sections uh, to be conversing I, and whatnot. I th I think the update was was really to the the goal of the update was to make it so that it would automatically turn student to none, no matter what the forum setting was. Because that was a problem that we would have. We would have instructors not set student to none. They'd create their group topics, and it would the group topics would inherit student as contributor, and all the students were still seeing all the group topics. Yeah. So <coughs> we um, that, that was UVA, actually we, that was actually a bug, you guys, that you didn't mm, really yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, was, I really was, didn't know about because what was it. happening was it was taking the default perms. Right? right and always using those right yeah. no so, matter what so you couldn't like even if you changed them it would just revert back to the default so, so we, that was we, um we tried to contribute back the fix that we did at uva for this which was to turn the contributor ones to none but for some reason people didn't like that um and that fixed the problem locally 
you know, not just for uh, course sites, but also for project sites. Um, because with, with the um, not changing all contributors to none, that uh, still leaves groups who shouldn't be able to access those, those forums and topics uh, access to them. Are we still here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got very quiet. I thought I lost something. <laughs> We're all in very deep thought. <laughs> Reading the comments page. Like I, I mean, I, I think that 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 permissions bug has been there for a while. So that's why I think that we really didn't uh, know about all of. Or we didn't necessarily stumble upon all of this until just recently when that got fixed. And then it showed like how all this stuff wasn't working. <laughs> no, I, I had a JIRA open years ago for this. And I created a JIRA to contribute mm -hmm. it back. And people said they didn't want it fixed. Uh, let me find that and I can tell you where that is. Um, sure. Sure. That'd be good. Um, but yeah, I think th this will be great. Just getting rid. Of, it makes sense just to get rid of this restriction. So. Mm -hmm. So the the Jira where that was posted was two five zero four three, and we tried to contribute it back there, uh, and the implementation was not desirable to some because uh, you know the implementation that we had at UVA was not desirable to some because they use um, contributor for TAs. So that was two, yeah, 25043 and no, I guess that's the only one. That's where it was uh, brought up. Twenty eleven. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So this has been around for a long time, and um, we tried to submit a proposed fix, but uh, it was not uh, accepted. I mean, why, why do you think people have changed now? Like, because there seems to be agreeing with what you're saying in this JIRA right now. Yeah, as far as I can tell, I mean, so it was in 2018. Uh, student type role. So they have reservations about changing the criteria for which roles get set to none to check for contributor access level because other roles are contributed with that level. So you know, we, we did it at UVA to check for contributor and then automatically set all contributor to none. Because that fixed it for, you know, pretty much all site uses, uh, whether project or course. But we also have our TAs able to edit, you know, forums and topics, so. Well, we're running over time here a bit. So are we done talking about that, Jira? Because I kind of got what I needed. I don't know if anybody yeah, else. Yeah, no, I, I did too. <laughs> I think we're good. Yep, okay, cool. I think we're good. So <laughs> I think we will adjourn.
And thanks everybody for participating. Thank and we'll you. see you in a couple of weeks. Great. Um, yes. We don't we don't have anything scheduled, so if nothing comes up, we'll look at some more juries. Sounds good. Thanks. See ya. Bye.